day. And next up, we have a matchup you can break down, Derek. So what's the story, Dawn and Glory? Love it. That's very good. I was trying to think of something you could do with Dawn and Glory for ages. And that didn't just instantly pop to you? That no. wasn't even, I didn't even think long about that one. That no. was just, wait, Dawn and Glory. You're a smarter man than I. <laughs> Don't know about that. Yeah. But anyway, what's going on with these two players? What have they brought? And what well, uh, it's been a, an up and down road for both of these players. They both started at different points and kind of both converged on the same win-loss record, with Dawn having a little bit of a more rough start to Grandmasters, Glory having a very good start, and then things took an upswing for Dawn and a downswing for mm -hmm. Glory, and now they're meeting in the middle at 7 and 4, which is just such an interesting break point in Division B, because of course with Tom, Glory, and Dawn all on that record, and uh, just below them, Staz, Alutimu, and Frosty, really not that far behind at all. It does just make for a, uh, a very exciting breakdown here, where one of these two players who takes the victory here, of course, one of them has to go up to eight and five. Um, it will just mean that they start to actually, or eight and four, sorry. It will start to mean that they're actually getting into the lead and breaking away from the rest right, of the pack right. and getting that first seed. Yeah, so it's a big match here. Don, again, as we mentioned a little bit earlier at the start of the show, bringing the Maligos Druid deck I'm a huge fan of. And then the Holy Wrath piled in and the Priest. Obviously, his other deck was the Warrior that's been banned out. But again, we see Don's uh, pennant for uh, the combo decks. Although, I wasn't, I wasn't really feeling Don yesterday. I feel like he wasn't really up to standard. I feel like there was a couple of turns, especially on the Priest deck, because mm. he played Priest twice, right? Where um, he just... It was like he wasn't sure what to do. And I feel like with Priest, although we talk about it being a very complicated deck, and it can be, I feel like some of the turns were were pretty like, no, no, you do this. Yeah. Like this is this is a fairly just you, you bring it all the way from priest specialization to just bread and butter hearthstone. And I feel like there were some turns that he just didn't make things happen. I think he played Staz, right? And he just didn't trade into the Misha. Stuff for like example, that. he just yeah. just left a meter on the board and lost a lost a minion for it. So very very strange. I think Don or hope Don has tightened things up. But Glory on the on the other hand has again I think been playing some very solid Hearthstone throughout the season. Yeah, he has. Uh, it, it feels like Glory maybe got. <sighs> We were, we were obviously comparing him to Chonsu at the start because they were both at the same win-loss record, I believe, after week four of 7-1. Yeah, seven seven one. One. Yeah. yeah, but of course things have continued to go up and up for Chonsu, whereas for Glory, it's uh, starting to just equalize a little bit more. He, he hasn't been looking weak at all. I think maybe it's just been the games haven't been going his way. But I'll, I'll be keeping an eye on him, of course, because there's still yet to be a player in Division B who has separated themselves from the pack in the way we've seen from players like Hunter Ace in Europe and, of course, Chonsu here in Asia Pacific. Yeah, it's definitely been more a, a mixture of everyone kind of swapping places throughout the season, yeah. apart from maybe the bottom of the pack a little bit. But, again, kind of unfortunate that Glory and Alutimu's lineups have been so similar, but they're both in the same division for this season, which means that, they, um, you know, that they're applying this... You know, strong knowledge and, and preparation, but it also has just a collateral damage when yeah. they face each other, or if their opponents, you know, prepped for one, then they'll kind of know how to prep for the other. Generally speaking, of course. Yeah, we actually saw an interesting breakdown of that. I believe it was when Patra was playing against Glory or Dawn, where it felt like she was expecting them to ban. She was she was saying in the interview she expected. Uh, the other, she played both of them in the same week, right. and she expected they would ban the same thing, and they but didn't. they didn't. Yeah. Of course, they're playing differently, and we even saw that when they were playing against each other with Glory versus Alutimu, where they had different picks and bans. Yep. I believe it was like Shaman and Priest, the, yeah, the was, other way yeah, around. Yeah, shielded and banned. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which it's very just, strange. It's <laughs> super weird when you see this because you get these these kind of these pairs of players in some of the regions, like uh, Casey and Bunnyhopper or Viper and Bunnyhopper, a lot of the time in Europe, where they're bringing the same deck list week after week, but they're still making different picks and bans. I just find it incredibly interesting. Yeah, and it just shows that it's not all just um, at least just solved because you look at players like Casey, like Bunny Hopper, so on, so on. These are really good Hearthstone players. I literally agree. the best in the world. And they don't agree on things yeah. in all cases, which means that there's some wiggle room. Because someone's, you'd have to say generally speaking, someone's right and someone's wrong. But the fact they can't really work it out and they just think they're, yeah. they're right the is, is actually minute. very interesting. But let's go into game number one between Dawn and Glory. Dawn on the Priest once again. And I say once again not because he's played it today, but because he played it yesterday. And Glory going to be on that Warrior and already in Town Cryer. This is the second mummy. Wow, that's a lot of removal. It really is. And I think this could be obviously pretty important. Town Cryer becomes a little bit worse when you're facing down a Cleric opening. Sorry, but when you're facing down a Light Warden opening, you are 
very, very happy to see this guy. I think pretty easy stuff as well for I Dawn. I like it from Dawn, yeah. Psycho Pomp is far from a priority when he's only played a one drop this game. It's not going to get all too much value, so just get the buffs going as quick as possible. Make a minion that's difficult to deal with. Yeah, with a second set of arms and a powered shield. Yeah. Glory might just not be able to kill this Light Water. <laughs> Nothing's going to stack up too well versus it. Let's get the shield block off just to draw a card, gain some armor, makes him a little bit safer and opens up a potential shield slam. <laughs> I do wonder as well if, if there was... I mean, probably not, but I was just wondering, is do you ever hold the shield block... To shield slam. To shield slam. And not even necessarily next turn, Yeah. because you got, you've got Mummy, that's just a good card. But was the draw a card in the armor... Mm that much better than hero power and then having shield point. box shield slam yeah, just on demand point. later like does he need that extra card when he has mm. mummy mummy shield like shield slam to do the next like three four turns Maybe. my argument for like getting into glory's head i think he would say the mana next two turns probably perfectly happy to just go mummy mummy right. and then see what happens afterwards um but honestly, actually, I wouldn't have hated to see Hero Power there instead. Yeah, because to me, it's a slight armor difference now, which doesn't matter. You're as high health as you're almost ever going to be in the game. Uh, and also, is it such a bad plan to go Mummy Mummy Shield Block Hero Power Shield Slam? Yeah. Like that's and also, it's a very important number. Shield Block uh, Hero Power Shield Slam is seven, which against Priest is the second best number past three, I think. No tomb can hold me! Not too much of a surprise. No tomb can hold me! We can see he's going to straight into a Psycho Pump turn, which means if Dawn so chooses, he can just res guaranteed Light Warden. He doesn't have to. It is kind of surprising that it died, though. Not obviously in that Glory did it, but just because of Dawn not going with the Divine Spirit. Because I have to be honest, I was kind of expecting that to come down because uh, there, there was the five armor that Glory had gained, of course, which makes Shield Slam a little bit scary. But if you just double up the health, go face, Mummy doesn't kill it off. Hero Power Shield Slam doesn't kill it off. I think that Dawn could have made a nice big minion at the start that you could have just ridden through to victory. Do you think there's enough of a read that yeah. Glory didn't have Spell Break in his hand because he played a Mummy or not? Uh, because uh, that. It, it's a tough one, right? If you buff it into turn four and then they just silence, silence you it. and you've used a divine spirit, then it's like Fair point. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And yeah. I'm not saying you should never use divine spirit until you have lethal, obviously. But I wonder if on turn four on that board it is too much of a hard lockdown. And yeah, you may be right, because also the uh the Wild Pyromancer did to an extent play around Restless Mummy because it put something else on board, whereas just a heal would have uh, been a completely dead board right. to mummy. So I, I I see Dawn's point here, um, and as long as he's playing around Mummy in some way, I'm happy because that was right. that was the play that was nine times out yeah. of ten going to happen. If you just play into a turn that you didn't have to, when Mummy just clears the board, you're playing some bad Hearthstone. Yeah. If you didn't have to, especially because Warrior is, I feel like such a pain by numbers deck at the moment, where the turns are so predictable. You, you should play against Control Warrior as if they are going to like yeah. play a 1-mana one 1-2 one or 1-3. They're probably going to armor up or drop a 2-2 two, two taunt sometimes. And then, you know, they're going to go into these like mummies and then go into either Dynamatic or Zilliax, then That's into right. our Megadillo because it sounds a bit silly to say you should just play as if they have a yeah. perfect curve. Well, they actually just do a lot of the time or at least have a good chunk of it. Glory winning on board. And these are situations you just don't often come back from. In it's doable, but my worry now is, I, well, my worry overall with Priest in this position is, how does it actually fight back versus the Warrior minions? Because I feel not very well is the answer. Yeah, I think the, the way that Dawn is trying to do that is, like, every health buff card he, he casts that is not being cast on Amit, feels horrible for him because he really, really wants to be able to get that Amit down, buff up all his minions, and then say to Glory, you have to have the brawl. And you have to probably win the brawl a lot of the time sure. as well. Because even just a random one drop with, like, say, 14 health, 16, 18 health, whatever, is enough to just go in a fire go. In the meantime, 
time though, this light warden is going to get cleaned up. And again, Shadow Mega Dilla with shields on. Absolutely. It's looking like an impenetrable defense right now for Glory. I think this is just a lock, especially as Omega Dillo is very possibly going to survive. So maybe we don't even see the Tomb Warden next turn. Um, especially when Dawn has you have literally <laughs> no development. Game. That's just nothing. Oof, and look at Glory just like. Again, these players, it's so tense. This is second to last week to decide who gets to playoffs. Yep. It's all on the line. And almost every single player in Asia Pacific Grandmasters is fighting for it. It's crazy. It's not like, okay, you know, I'm in top three. I'm, I'm not going to drop down to fifth no matter what, so I'm fine. No, no one's really safe apart from exactly Chonsu, yep. <laughs> maybe, and that's it. So everyone is fighting for every single thing they can get and a chance to go to the global finals and become the global champion, which is a pretty big deal. And after Glory having lost three matches in a row now, you start to wondering about, you know, oh, why is this happening to me? Am I cursed even yeah. at this point to have can bad Can I even RNG? win another match this season? Exactly. Like, but if Glory knuckles down and plays some good Hearthstone like that, I think he absolutely can. Yeah, whereas so far, Dawn has not been having the best weekend, and we'll see if he can make a comeback, or if Dawn, uh, if Glory sorry, is just going to take the win. We'll be right back after this quick break. performance and longtime efforts in the local fan community. We've created a special and memorable Hearthstone themed weekend.
Welcome back. It's Dawn versus Glory going into game number two. And Glory already leading one and zero. And uh, Dawn just couldn't get the job done with Priest. And I, I guess that the more we see this, the more I, I am leaning on just Warrior being one of the few decks that is, is putting a stop to Priest at, at least a little bit. Yeah, it's definitely got, I think, one of the best shots up against Priest, which is why players are bringing it. Because as much as you may want to go for an anti-Priest lineup, uh, or oh, sorry, as much as you may want to go for a ban priest lineup, as we can see there with the shield happening on right. both sides there, a lot of the time it's just not a possibility. You want to have stuff that can take the win there because with the eternal meme, it feels like it being this point that it feels like a best of one because the priest just wins on both sides. If you can upset that breaking serve in a way, then it does put you at such a huge advantage. However, obviously with this being conquest, when the priest loses, it can be queued up again. Yeah, it's an quite interesting question, isn't it? Because if you look at the bans, uh, Glory got to play his warrior because Dawn banned out his druid, whereas Glory actually banned Dawn's warrior, right. which means that you know if your opponent's playing priest and then a deck that beats priest, at least a bit of the time, then you've got to think, well, that's going to be pretty good if you queue Priest, right? You've either got a mirror match, which, you know, is a little bit annoying and fine, uh, or a matchup that doesn't feel as good for Priest. So maybe just queuing Priest was the wrong thing to do. Maybe. Maybe. That's going to be the Holy Wrath Paladin, which, again, not a bad matchup. We saw Frosty demolish this matchup uh, yesterday. Which looked pretty good. Glory off to a pretty good start here with just Warden into Tolver into Nefreset Ritualist if he really wants. Yeah, super high tempo start here for the Glory, which is fantastic because this is the kind of board I think you want to get as against Paladin where it's just a single uh, or just a few minions that are hitting face with one very high attack minion. Because in this instance, even if something like a, uh, obviously, oh, sorry, I want to say something like, even if Subdue were to come down and take out the high attack uh, inner fired Tolvir for glory, which I'm seeing happen in the next couple of turns, he's still got the Light Warden smacking face. And this is where I wonder, is there ever a, a world where, tr well now, like trade Nefreset, but then actually... Okay, before Mr. You know, yeah, yeah. before the cleric turned up, <laughs> yeah. trade into that, uh, use the deficit, and then actually play sidekick on the uh, on the light warden. Uh, that's possible. Because then that means that everything's at high health, so that consecrate doesn't just snipe off a potentially high damage. You still have in a fire later to do some big burst or just add on to the toll the following turn. Yeah, I like the sound of that. Obviously. Cleric has something to say about that, because <laughs> after all those fancy things, drawing cards is pretty good. And Glory did go for that play. And now, Dawn, jeesh. Just going to go with Akai, which I think is a huge nod to just say, Shrink Ray has to be played next turn with the coin. Oi, oi, oi. Just has to be, right? <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless a timeout is found, it's, it's just too much. What, 16 this turn? No, you can do more. Can you, you do 18 draw? this turn? You can overdraw, right? Just two cards overdraws a card. So yeah, I like this. Jeez. Overdraw your opponent, draw cards yourself. Yeah. The overdraw, of course, isn't hugely important unless we're hitting exactly Shivala. It's just a way to basically remove a card draw because they're drawing two instead of three. I actually think in this specific matchup, you're even slightly less bothered about Shavala. I think it's better to overdraw burn, uh, to remove all right timeouts and stuff like that. Yeah. Because I'm not being really funny, but if Dawn is playing Shavala in this game, he might just have won <laughs> if you give him time to play Shavala. In this specific yeah. game, yeah, in this yeah, specific yeah. game, because yeah. there's such an aggressive opening, sure. I think you'd rather see timeout burn than yeah. Shavala, because at this point, Shavala's never going to get played. We are. Lightning Hearthstone right now. It's absolutely crazy how fast this is going. <laughs> because now, what, seven? heal circle, that's five, one-off lethal. Oh, I yeah, think. yeah, yeah, because you can circle as well. So you don't circle, right? Um, it's not worth it, surely. You draw, have a, you draw a card? You have a cleric and pyro in hand, though. Do you not want to just not overcommit to the board? Huh? Uh, I suppose, I suppose. Like, yeah. Uh, I'm not actually sure, because being three damage off lethal and one damage off lethal are very similar, actually, for the most part. That's what I'm thinking. Like, I, I don't know if the extra damage means anything. 
Whereas this is a circle that draws one card, maybe, you know, in a turn or so, it draws three, it draws four. It's true, but if we actually look at the specifics of it, like, he didn't have the Light Warden in hand then. It was only like Cleric and Pyromancer were the cheap cards. So it would have to be, he has to find n another spell. And then it's Cleric, Pyromancer, another spell, and then Circle of Healing, which draws him like two cards, which is like a bit better, but other stuff has I, to go right for I, that. I guess I was thinking maybe even further down, because like Psycho Pump into, say, Bon Samdi, there's a lot of stuff to do yeah, in between yeah, needing fair. to circle. I think either way it's... I mean, don't get me wrong, yeah. It's, it's fine. looking pretty yeah, yeah. Now again, one damage off. <laughs> so, in a fire, topsy, all of these cards. Too. There's a few else. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Even the. the <laughs> and that's go. just game. <laughs> uh, we blinked and wow. almost missed it. Glory taking the match to, uh, two and zero in hyper speed fashion over Dawn. You can see both players seven and four, as you mentioned, Derek. So now Glory going to go up to eight and four. Dawn going to seven and five, which don't get me wrong, seven and five is a good score. Yeah. Anything above 50% from what we've seen generally through Grandmasters is good, but that's just one extra step. And like we said, now Glory has what, two matches left? Of, 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 until it's decided who that's makes right. top four. And that's going to be the case for everyone very soon. So it means that now everyone has to catch glory or, you know, uh, whoever as well after after today and tomorrow. And you want to be the one that people have to try and catch up to, not the one doing the running. That's right. The only player who can catch up, who can catch up to him this week now is Tom. In his final right. game tomorrow, right. he could get himself into a position where he is drawing uh, with glory there. But the way Tom's been looking so far... He's not been doing very well the last few weeks. Something about his decks, maybe his play. I think maybe it's more his lineup is getting a little bit predictable at this point and players right. are taking advantage of that. But either way, he does need to be able to take that win. Or like you said, Glory is looking to be in a very good spot to get that first place. Yeah, he looks he's looking there pretty good to me. The next matchup we have though is gonna be 